All right. Episode 32, we've got Ron Shaw from Avi. We've got Jake Krantz, Willow Creek Media. You know how we do it. We get right into the show. Ron, we're talking Avi. We're talking supplements. We're talking collagen. We're talking kids protein. Give us the story. When did it start? Who did it start with? Absolutely. First of all, thanks for having me on the show, Mark. Um, so Avi started last year, June. Um, conceptually, my partner and I, we wanted to get into the market space because we thought there was a gap in the market. Um, the gap in the market is, is the product, uh, collagen in itself, wasn't being catered to what scientifically proves needs to kind of where, where collagen needs to enter. Um, and uh, we took that and a combination of what we saw working in the sports nutrition category, which is fun flavors, different product type, and we wanted to bring it into this collagen space, which was ever booming. Now you had experience in uh, the marketing side of sports supplements. I think yourself and maybe a partner were doing that prior to launching this. Uh, how long were you doing that and how many brands did you, did you work with? Sure, so we, we had our marketing agency, Ghost3 Media, which is still alive um, and, and working with different brands, but we did that from 2013 to 2019 exclusively where we worked with almost about 30 brands going in and out of fixing up from ground up to kind of helping with optimizations on the branding and design, um, as well as ad performance. There's nothing like being on the other side yes. when it's not your money and you're able to tell somebody exactly what they should be doing. Uh, and then you take that and you sort of develop your own brand here with Obvi. So in 2019, yourself and your partner are partners uh, launched the first product. What was it and, and why, why were you guys focused on that? Sure thing. Uh, so it was our, we launched two flavors of one product. It was our, our collagen. Um, uh, super, it was our collagen protein and um, we launched fruity cereal and cinna cereal. Um, and we took that because if you look at the market of collagen, 92% of the market is actually unflavored. Uh, we wanted to basically look at collagen and say, collagen doesn't need to be boring. It can be fun. Um, and so after six months of R&D, we came out with those two flavors because also on the sports nutrition end, fruity flavors and cereal flavors are trending higher than regular flavors that we're known for like the chocolates and, and vanillas. So when you launch a product like that, are you doing it online? Is it a direct to consumer uh, focus? And did you just throw up a website for those that are watching and maybe want to do a direct to consumer business? Is that difficult? What does that look like when you're launching a product? Yeah, I think um, for us, we are direct to consumer was our bread and butter and still is. Um, and so going Shopify route, right, uh, which makes it almost seamless. Um, obviously, we had experience building them, but going Shopify route um, and then building that, building the crux of your business off of that um, really helps kind of establish your foundation. Um, so that's kind of where we started, which was product and website. Um, along with social media. I think, I think if you build the social media along with when you're starting the brand and really focusing on that, I think that grows with you and sometimes can elevate that. Now, co-packers in the space of supplements, um, I, I, and, and we'll get to margins in a second because I know there's a, there's a difference whether we're talking like a pre-workout versus a, a, a protein source. Um, since you were in the space consulting i'm assuming you sort of had a lead into co-packing which anybody's watching this is where they're going to actually get the product made they're going to put in the you know put in the packaging and get it shipped out what what is that what does that look like sure um yeah i, I think you like you nailed it uh we did have a a kind of peek into that side of the industry when we did work with different clients um and i think it gave us the leg up of not having to guess our first um our, our first attempt at working with someone um, but it was obviously, you learn a lot about, you know, there's a lot of pieces that go into it, labels, lids, right? We wanted custom pink lids thinking initially, oh, that should be easy, but that's a six to eight week lead time. You know, um, we wanted matte labels versus glossy. That's also a four week lead time. And you start incorporating these things and you, and you realize it's not just product in a bottle filled at a certain time delivered to your warehouse. There are a lot of moving parts, folks, when you're developing a business, especially in CPG. You think you're throwing some collagen in a little bottle? That's not how it works. Uh, why don't we talk about pricing structure? I think that's going to be helpful. You had experience, again, so you see it from both sides, which is an interesting point to be brought in, is there's a margin that's required in any business. Uh, specifically this, specifically when you're talking direct to consumer because you're 
uh, having to deal with shipping and also just touching the product. Again, 3PLs or warehousing and, and, and people who are actually gonna put the product into the box, there are fees associated, so they add up really quickly. Um, how did you come up with pricing structure? How would you uh, consult somebody who's, who's looking to uh, launch a product like that? Absolutely. I think um, one, one factor people often forget, obviously you have your um, bottling prices, you have your label pricing, lids pricing, um, and then you have your delivery to your warehouse. Um, that's your landed cost, right? But I think what a lot of people forget is, is what is the model you're going to market with? If you're going Facebook ads market route, right? Um, incorporating your, your cost per acquisition into your pricing model is extremely important. Um, and I think that's how we kind of look at, looked at um, Obby, which was we know from day one, we're running Facebook ads, right? And we took our average cost per acquisition that we thought was fair. Um, and then we priced our product accordingly too. Of course, we looked at formula, we looked at the market price, so I would say where we priced was, it was not market price. It was a little bit more premium price, but then you also have to back that up with, hey, why are you different, right? And that's where our formula came into the factor um, and our, our, our flavor for, um, profile came into factor. Um, but I think, I think you know, overall pricing wise, you have to incorporate that marketing piece just as much as you incorporate your landed costs um, and then comparing to the market. Cost per acquisition. You are throwing your product onto Facebook. You think somebody's just gonna buy it. That's not how it works. You gotta throw that thing, you gotta put money against the ad, you gotta keep pushing it out there, you gotta find who the demographic is, you gotta find, create all these different funnels, uh, and then you're gonna come up with the price, the cost. What did that, what was it? Was it $10 to acquire a customer? Then you got to put that $10 on top of your cost of goods sold. You got to put that $10 on top of your cost of goods sold on top of your shipping. You got to put that $10 on top of your cost of goods sold on top of your shipping. You got to put that, you get what I mean? By I, the end I of it, <laughs> by the end of it, is there any money left over? Uh, and if there is, which, which is the, 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 the minority, that's why so many businesses fail on top of the 45 other reasons. Right. Um, you can then, what I'd say, double down. You know, you were investing a thousand a month. You might be able to invest uh, two thousand. That's that's the flow. But again, we're talking direct to consumer. Going retail will be a whole other uh, a whole other conversation. So let's now talk 2020. Uh, luckily, COVID uh, may or may not have affected you in any way, especially being direct to consumer. What does the business look like today? Absolutely. I, I think that you know, COVID was obviously a wrench. Uh, but, you know, wrenches are not necessarily always negative. Uh, for us, we did our best three months, trailing three months. Um, and for us, we, not that we didn't expect it. Um, obviously, you look at the mindset, the consumers are at home, right? Mm -hmm. The uh, buyer behavior is everything's online, uh, convenience, shipping. So naturally, e-commerce is going to play its part to be better. Uh, for us, obviously, it was very successful. But what we saw, which was really interesting, was we had launched our kids' protein line um, right around COVID time, which was tricky for us. But kids are all at home right now. Parents are at home. Parents looking for solutions for their kids became a, a kind of a trajectory in our favor during this time because it almost, where, where we, we launched a new product, but it, the sales behaved almost like a product that's been existing. So it's been a very interesting landscape for us where we, when you're launching a new product, you don't think to double, triple down on it within a month or two, right? You're going to see how it's doing. But for us, the kids line is doing excellent during this time. And I think that's what's been very interesting in our business model, which is even though we're launching consistently products every other month or every month, um, we're seeing trends in product lines that we didn't think would, you know, kind of grow so quickly. Um, they are growing so quickly and, and we're trying to back that up with more flavors, et cetera, and launches. As a parent, and most uh, parents would attest to this, we're all looking for ways to get more protein uh, in our kids' bodies. Um, we're looking for more uh, nutrition. Uh, if, if you are uh, on the right path when it comes to putting good foods, real foods in front of your, your kids, and then in this case, um, having some ways to supplement it with something that they um, may want like a right. great tasting uh, protein shake or of course going into a smoothie or the 25 other ways you can use a protein source like that. 
Um, Absolutely. All right. Well, I like that. Uh, let, let's close it out. What does the next 12 months look like for Avi? Sure. So uh, the next 12 months, we've actually figured out our next six flavor launches. So we're doing a flavor launch per month. Um, and we have that set up. And then we are um, going to start heavily expanding into um, a few more daily essential products, um, ranging from, you know, all day energy pills to hormonal balance. Um, one of the biggest things is we lean on our community. We have about 6,000 members in our Facebook community. Um, we ask them what they want. We let them pick the next flavor. We let them pick the next product. Um, surveys are huge for us. And so it's not that we may not have our next 12 months figured out. It's they're actually in the process of choosing our next 12 months, which has been something that's very successful for us because there's no surprises. Um, every product that we're about to launch is already on our website uh, two to three months before it's about to launch and people start signing up and gearing up for, for excitement. So a lot of different flavors, a lot of daily essentials coming and some more expansion to the kids line. A customer centric brand. Makes a lot of sense to me, folks. Uh, people first. The yes. consumers are the ones who are going to build your brand. Uh, oftentimes, we forget that. If you want to do something that may be dear to your heart, but not to anybody else's. Uh, all right, my man, Ron, appreciate that. I'm going to put your info somewhere around here at the end anyway. Jay Absolutely. Krantz, we're talking podcasts here, buddy. Uh, I, I've been lucky enough uh, to be interviewed uh, when was that? A couple months ago. Uh, so I know. Uh, the, yeah, a couple months ago. A couple months ago. So I know the vibe. Give it to us. A Willow Creek Media. Yes, sir. Let's go. Talk about it. All right. Let's do it. So a little bit more context around who I am. So I'm 20 years old. I am a full-time student at the University of Minnesota. Um, I work full-time at a nonprofit right now. And I, I wanted to do something with media and marketing because I knew that was something I was really interested in. So a few months ago, I just started testing different things. I started asking people if they needed help with their social media, building websites, and I did all of that. And then I had this idea of doing a podcast with somebody. So I started producing their podcast. Um, that's Kamish Talks with Josh Schaub. Check it out. It's about uh, sports business. And um, we started to make a business out of it. So we've got a couple of different clients now. Um, so we started with just podcast production, and now we're starting to get into um, a full media production for a few of those clients. So for context around what that would mean, Mark, as you're as, using you as an example, it would be if I was basically the outsourced solution for everything you do for your show, Let's Eat. I like that. So basically, Jake's an underachiever. Uh, just recapping this, you know, he's a full-time student. He's uh, works full-time and he's uh, developing a business. Um, so, you know, you know, it's, it's all good, Jake, uh, making us all feel bad about ourselves. <laughs> uh, Okay, outsourcing, I like that. And give, give me like a, a 30 second on what you think is the reason for bringing a, a brand, whether it's personal, right, or, you know, or a company onto a platform like, like here, like what, what you can see I'm doing with LinkedIn and, and Zoomcast and then even over on the audio on a podcast. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, well, there's, there's some psychological reasons behind it. And as you brought up, it's branding. Um, Going back to like myself, I've never really been good at asking people for things and directly selling to people. Um, and I know that's something that you do on a consistent daily basis. Uh, but another part of the business is this word of mouth marketing um, and bringing in people to the business that you aren't contacting directly. So bringing a brand, whether it be personal or a business brand or like what you're doing both um, together on a platform like this, it just allows you to um, spread what you're doing through word of mouth with all of your guests and then all the people within their networks as well. That was well said. You nailed it. Um, Jake, wish you nothing but the best. Uh, hit him up. I don't ever know where it's going to go. Somewhere <laughs> around here. Scotty, sorry, dude. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know where it's going to go. Uh, Ron uh, with Avi, Jake with Willow Creek Media. I wish you nothing but the best. Thanks so Thanks, much, Mark. Peace, fellas. Appreciate it.